back everybody, episode 54 V time. We're back again this week. And whoo boy, there's a lot of good stuff out. We all love good stuff. stuff. Good as a stretch, but <laughs> basically it's... if you're a white shorts fan as well, you gotta stick all the way. Anywho, welcome all again. Good to have you as always. It's good to be here. And without further ado, let's get straight into it. But before that, we'd like to say that. If you wish to pick up anything from TCG Player, please use the affiliate link down below if you're buying from TCG Player. Purchases through our link help support the channel so we can make great content straight to you. Yep, and with this scripted out of the way, let's go straight up to the leaks. Help us help you. Please don't do it, Shane. Yeah, do a what? Never mind. Is Anywho, go into the leaks. Like we said in the last week time, as we posted the beat time, uh, different fight posted his premium collection leak. Of course, same thing goes right now. Solomon probably posted his premium collection leak. And we we're recording this on a Friday. Solomon posted this on a Saturday, so you see why we're not going to cover that today. That's why we're going to cover a different fight, yada yada yada. Yep. Solomon next week, wherever it is, it's out of Shadow or Grand Blue. It's pretty good. Probably people are already talking about it. But, Deep Police, we got Heat Wave Beast. Gale, Gale my glass. Godzilla, Godzilla. Pretty much. It's basically a kaiju from Pacific Rim. Mm -hmm. I mean, at this point, I think Bushiro kind of mixed up some of their strides here and there. Like the Nova Grappler stride looks like it should be in Deep Police or Link Joker. This thing looks like it should be in Kagura Tachi's. I, I think arts are getting mixed up a bit. But who, who am I to judge? Anyway, his he has two abilities. One continuous Vanguard G Zone. If you if face up all of your grade 3 on rear guard and guard in a circle, get 5k and 5k shield and intercept. Not a bad card, not a bad effect. Its other ability is auto va uh, vanguard when placed. Auto vanguard when placed, cannabis one, turn a card from your G zone, face up, look at seven cards from the top of your deck, call two cards from among them to rear guard, shuffle your deck, and this unit gets critical plus one until the end of battle. For each of your grade three units, Oof. I mean, not a bad effect for a stride overall. Mm -hmm. Like it facilitates, you know, defense and power. So the more of you know, this it's flipped up, the more you get. Plus, next to that liner, that's a lot of shield on your grade threes. I mean, the best part about this is it scales, and then it doesn't, it, you know, have to flip itself. It still even use another stride to flip it and still get the benefits from it. Plus, it gains. What, critical for every grade 3 unit on the board, so you can pop down some random grade 3s in the back row and just have this thing swing for lethal. Mm -hmm. Not only that, if you think about that Vamp or any other card, if you don't mind, uh, mind calling over stuff, like, this actually facilitates multi-attacking in the police now. Mm -hmm. Not too shabby. It gives you a reason to put Force 1 down on rear guard, or even, this even gives you a bigger reason to play Force 2. Especially if, for Japan, they got Twin Order, which is a really good card for Deep Police. Mm -hmm. And if English gets to an order, people are gonna play Force 2 all around the board. Yeah. Anyway, you enjoyed that root beer? It's delicious, that one is so cold. <laughs> anyway, moving on to ODT. Like uh, a few weeks before, we saw each clan from Dragonflame get a starter and some random common. They're doing the same trend again, but instead of a starter, we're seeing a draw trigger and another card next to it. So, draw trigger is Battle Sister Tiramisu? It, it, it is Tiramisu. Tiramisu, tiramisu yes. Oh, oh, there we go. Battle Sister Tiramisu. Yeah. They're and then, <laughs> and the, the card next to it is Battle Maiden Kikia. Auto Rigor when it attacks, cause Soul Blast 1, draw a card, discard a card from your hand, and this unit gets 5k until the end of that battle. So, being, you know, a 13k beater, it's not too shabby, with all the other effects we saw for OTT of looking at the cards on top of the deck, stacking them. This basically means, oh, I saw them on top of the deck, I'm gonna put this specific card on top and the other two in the other direction. I'm gonna use this, draw a ditch, and give it power. So now my deck's a bit better, or I have the pieces I need, or, you know. OTT is basically uh, rigging the game. Or as some people like to call, stacking your deck and cheating. Or works. <laughs> Oracles. Wow. And you just hit it right on the head. And there it is. <laughs> we'll get to Seuss on the one he finally drops next week, two weeks, whenever. Moving on. Uh, this technically is part of the leaks, but we already saw it. Bushra decided to put as cards of the day both the Kagura and the Gear Chronicle Strides that we both saw from Kai and uh, Vanguard Insider League. So that kind of pointless to cover them again. 
So moving on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> ah, the stream happened. Mmm, the stream happened. So, should we cover the... You want to talk about standard first? Standard or premium? We'll talk about standard first. Standard first. Kogaru got a VR leak. Not not Overload, sadly. Oh, sadly. I'm happy. Blade Master got a leak. Dragonic, oh, Blade Master, so him. Has a Force Marker, and it's ooh, so good. Continuous Vanguard. During your turn, if your opponent has no rear guards, this unit and all of your vision tokens get power 10k. Its other ability is Act. Vanguard, once per turn, cause this card, two cards from your hand, call a vision token to rear guard, and at the end of turn, retire that token. If you have a Vibrant Strike Doha and a Vibrant Strike Garen, on your rear guard, retire all of your opponent's rear guards. It's a better Blade Master. It's almost exactly like the original Blade Master, but a little bit more efficient and faster. And it's just like the crit output 10k across the board. And you don't have to Soul a Grade 3, and you get a Vision Token without needing both the Garen and Doka. If you have the Garen and Doka, you're just board wiping. So it's all around better. Mm -hmm. And now the Grade 2 and Grade 1 we saw before actually makes a little bit more sense. Uh, you want Narakami? So. Finally, got Nerikami Stride. So, <laughs> the question of the day is, for all Nerikami mains, is it a good first strike? Because that's all you've been missing, right? Is it? Oh, it's an amazing first strike. It's the only strike you want to use <laughs> at the time. It's not amazing. It's a fucking dick. It I, really I, is a I, dick. I, I watched y'all's video. <laughs> so, Oof. what it what it does is act Vanguard cost soul less one. Oh yeah, it's Concrete Supreme Dragon stun burst strike. Uh, act Vanguard cost soul less one. Turn a card from your G zone face up Put this card into your G-Zone, face up. Your opponent chooses four cards, each from his or her uh, rear guard and drop zone, and binds them. For every four cards your opponent binds, you get to draw a card, and they have to bind a card from their hand. Mm -hmm. Wait, wait, what? For every four cards in your opponent's bind zone, not yes. binds. Sorry. And by every card Can you not binds. read? <laughs> Anyways, regardless, you're taking cards from their hand, you're plussing, and you're getting your Thunderstrike out to the wazoo. And you're taking cards from their job zone, so Grand Blue and technically Angel Feather kind of go, whoops. And, 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 and this? Yeah. Oh yeah, hand goes away. Like, you gotta think. <laughs> okay, first off, this card is just for never coming needed. If yeah. people start rushing or guarding early, you're just gonna mess them up. And as the game progresses, let's say never coming bound like 16 cards by now. And then they use this skill again. Okay, bind four more from your field that you probably have. And four more for your drop that you probably have, unless you already bound everything. Mm -hmm. That's up to 24. Now, this is, you know, magic numbers in late game. Yeah. But still, 24 cards and buy. Your opponent does not have a field, does not have a uh, drop zone as much anymore. Barely. And now, because of those 24, divide that by four, like six cards out of their hand they have to buy, and you draw six of those cards. Yep. So you basically plus. You can If the bind zone is big enough, you can ditch out the entire hand, stride into this, and get pieces back. Easily, while evicting your opponent in the process. Granted, it still has a, an inherent problem that Nerikami's had in premium, which is if there's nothing in the drop or nothing on the board, you're basically doing nothing. But they are also doing nothing. But <laughs> as we were in the video we posted, he went into what was it, voltage? Uh, Buster. Buster. Which wasn't a bad first try. Like, you bind something, gives power to Inferno. But what we realized later, mm -hmm. a better first try if they don't give you a drop zone nor a field yeah. is honestly the progenitor. Yeah, because, I mean, at that point, you're just striding for free, and it's now it's straight pluses because you're not discarding for the strike. You're still getting your triple drive from the progenitor. You're killing whatever is on the board if they have some sort of, you know, forerunner. Mm -hmm. And... You're setting there to be GB for your G-Guards. And if your progenitor hits, you're technically counter-blasting. Because, I mean, at that point, you're like, you don't want to, you know... Like, ditch out your hand, uh, minus yourself. You just want to be able to set up so you can G-guard if you're not going to kill them the first turn. Nobody exactly. Prepare for the next thing. Exactly. Um, another thing, note, note about this card is it goes back to G-zone, so every V-deck now gets to use whatever they wanted to do. I agree with Saul on this. This is more than likely specifically made just to make Vanquisher Premium playable. Or like, Combo Buster. Most of the other strides, yes, they focus on making the standard decks playable, like the Murakuma one, like the Gear Chronicle one, but this one specifically just says standard. There's not a lot of premium decks, or G decks for that matter, that actually work well with this strike. And the sad part is, is after we finally got good Thunderstrike support, all the Thunderstrike cards are now just not good. Nope. The only good thing that this does for old G cards is it goes away, so it gives your Vanguard's ability a chance. Mm -hmm. So if you have GB2 abilities or any old Nurkai abilities, they work. 
But the other thing that it does, it, it technically enables GB2 on your right. Eh. Take that as you will. Yep. Moving on. T-Police. The whole trend we talked about, about draw trigger and something else. But for this time, we don't have to even do any effects. Because the draw trigger is be uh, Beast Fur uh, Monster Momoya. Little cute beast here. And then the card that got leaked with it is Dimensional Robo Daibo. Don't need to do an effect because it's a 12k vanilla grade 2 with no shield and an intercept icon. I mean, at that point, if you have no shield value and an intercept icon, what are you doing? Mm. Yeah. It was a grade 3 effort. I have to put something in the box. <laughs> I can put it one of those cards in they the box. I can put an empty. They can make it boost. Make the 12k base grade 2 that can boost. So what if it gains shield? Mm. How? Maybe What's the deep police stuff? It says grade 3 is gain shield. Maybe it comes to I don't know. It puts good. Uh, all that, no. Yeah, all I mean, the only good is. thing I can think, think about it is with the Cray Elemental Strive from Premium Collection. Hey, give it power. Hey, if you drive check, you can stand something. It's a fucking vanilla unit. There you go. Anywho, moving on, moving on, moving on. Ah, more shards. We're gonna let Long read one of them. Oh, really? Yeah. DI. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> well. But, before we leave DI, we're gonna go Angel Fed. Holy Seraph Basas. Seal. Kazuta. Yeah, pretty much. Kazazel? Okay, That's disclaimer bizarre. about this card. Good effect on paper, the format does not... No. Two, two to three years ago, it's not a really good card. It has two abilities. <laughs> Auto Vanguard Generation Break 3. When placed until the end of this fight, your damage zone becomes seven cards to lose. If your G-Zone has five or more cards face up, when placed, it becomes eight instead of seven. So basically, if you meet all the conditions, your damage zone goes to 8 before you lose. Its other abilities act to Vanguard co cost Cannabis 4, and until the end of turn when your opponent will call cards from his or her hand to Guardian Circle, he or she must call them the same number of cards as... Uh, uh, wait. Yes. Must call the same number of cards in your damage zone or more at the same time. The English there is a little bit wonky. So. So you basically, if your damage zone, let's say, has six because you increased your self to seven or eight, your opponent for the end of turn, that turn that you activate this ability, has to use six or more cards from the, your their hand when they want to guard from hand. That excludes G guards, and you know. But still, like you got in three attacks, maybe more if you're playing uh, rescue. Oh yeah. But like, every one of those has to have six cards or more in your hand. Pretty much. It's not a bad card. The reason we say it's a good card on a paper, but bad in practice, is premium right now is first strike kill almost. You're not going to survive that long to be able to activate most of these abilities. Yeah, second and strike, people, second strike, you're pretty much trying to close out the game. Pretty much. And because of Murakumo, people already have strategies of damage denying. So you're not going to get to your four necessary cannon blasts for this. And at this point, like this card is allowing you to go pet to seven, not be it, you know. So technically, you, you already have to be below 6 when you do this, so you're only at 5, you're not at 6 or 7. Yeah. So. so, there was a theory we had that most of these strides are going to help standard decks. I really don't see how this helps a standard deck, because you're never going to get there. I mean, I don't know. And then another... It's too short. And another theory that's been following around the Vanguard Insider proposed is that all the strides in the previous premium collection that got not so good strides are gonna get better strides now, and vice versa. All the crews tries to get good strides in the premium collection from last year are gonna get kind of okay strides now. Yeah. Like Nova Graphics are gonna get them but busted and then whatever we have now. You can throw that out the window because Yeah, favorite. he agreed on this this thing just says fuck that theory. Yeah, this is I feel the man, man. Because yeah. like last year's is horrible and then this one's just like it's not bad. I think they tried it's just last like, year's is interesting because you healed too. Never before done. There was no point to it, because it did, just did that, you're stalling. This thing is just a different kind of stall. I mean... Like, think of it this way, and I'm borrowing from Anger Insider again. You, when you heal, you're basically telling your opponent you gotta deal one more damage than usual, so you're already saying you gotta go to 7 or 8, whenever and one card heals. This thing is basically the same thing, just in a different manner. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the Garger trick's nice, but... Oh no, it doesn't matter if you're not swinging like that. No, maybe Angel's one day will get a good finisher. I know, right? Anyway, moving on to Kagero, same principle. The draw trigger and something else. The draw trigger is... Uh, what the... Oh shit, sorry. 
So the man whose soul will pierce the heavens because he looks so girl to go on. Evil chief Galvin stride, you know, the, the whole thing. Um, so soul charge five, draw the same number of cards as trigger units that were soul charged by this effect. Oh, sorry. Power blast one. When it attacks. When it attacks. Yes, sorry. I don't do this often. <laughs> I can't really do this. But you turn a card face up in your G zone, you soul charge five, you draw cards equal to the number of triggers that were soul charged by this effect. And until the end of your, that battle, when your opponent would call cards from their hand to guard circle, he or she must call the same number of cards as normal units that were soul charged by this effect. So, you know. It's a balance. It's a, yeah. it's a bit of a win-win on this soul charge, because you know the worst part about playing DI like is soul charging triggers. <laughs> now you draw for them, and then if you don't draw cards, you make them harder to guard. So this it's a win-win. But not super lethal. This card reminds me a lot of the uh, what's that one? The one uh, Mary Call Me Stride. Oh. Uh, what's it called? Not not Ghidorah, but the other one. Octorandus. No, the one that used to fart first stride into all the time. Extra drive and. Yeah, you, it it comes to the number of residues you get to draw cards. Oh, the Mantis. Yeah. Um, but it's kind of like that. It's like okay, cool. They have a lot of rear guards. I get to draw a bunch of cards, but if they don't, I get extra drive, so I get extra benefit. This is the same yeah. way. You either get a lot of draw or you get a lot of garbage. I mean, look at it this way. Best case and worst case scenario. So you soul charge five triggers, you draw five. You soul charge five units, you don't draw nothing, but hey, he's almost unguardable. Yeah. But this yeah. one's more luck based than the other one. It's I love what someone said. Like, it's an interesting card and everything, but it costs a cannon blast, and at that point, if you're already using a cannon blast, why not stride into gas steel? Yeah, gas steel has put such a, such a high bar. <laughs> I mean, it, I guess it gets banned, you just have an option. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> that, that's now, the only plus to it. <laughs> now we're moving on to Kagura. The draw trigger is Toxophilia uh, Dragon. I hope I'm saying that right. <laughs> what is it? Toxophilia Dragon. Yeah. 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 And then the card that got leaked with it is Purple Gem Carbuncle. Auto rearguard once per turn. When your Vanguard stains, this unit gets power 15k until the end of turn, making it a 20k meter. So is every every dragon nation gonna have a a gem carbuncle? Because yellow gem carbuncles in our uh, nerf army is a trigger. Oh man, maybe. You <laughs> know, might be calling. They might call for a lawsuit. Oh, oh they're not wrong. Crystal Beast. <laughs> Anywho, the fact that it only specifically works for Warlord because uh, Blade Master's not gonna stand, and it's a twenty k beat stick or a twenty k booster is not too shabby, hmm. and it's free. Yeah. The only thing that happens if Vanguard stands, and with Overlord, the great. The uh, yeah. the end and now probably the cross because he's probably also gonna stain. That's not gonna be hard. <laughs> oh my god. Anywho, that's all for the week's league. So technically now we still have another stream league, but we're gonna cover that in the next section because we're technically talking about Y Sports at that point. <laughs> yes. Before we go to that, uh, announcement was made actually today. Breaking news, basically. We'll have to take this. You like the little banner. Due to the thing happening outside with social distancing and the Backstreet the, Boys. The Backstreet Boys. Big on tour. Yep. Uh, sets were delayed. Well, finally, Bush Road made, uh, announced and we got actual dates, at least for English. The trial decks that got delayed are finally going to get released in English, and the new official date is June 26th. Great news. That means we're going to get them in about a month and a half. Two months almost. You got delayed a month. Two months. Two months though. No, oh, we're man. getting them in two months. They got delayed about a month. Yeah, so I'll say like a delayed month. Not too shabby. All the Asha players, all the Jet players, and all the Alphamile players are happy. I'm specifically happy because I bought four trial decks. <laughs> Unless you know when you're doing them. Yep. So that's the great news. Now we can talk about why shorts. The reason I drink. No way. <laughs> Okay, this is basically for anybody that likes Bermudas and was playing Bermudas as an excuse to play idols. Now you can actually play idols. Because, I don't think we mentioned it, on the stream with Cohen and, you know, the big boy, they actually announced that Bank Dream is going to get a set in Vanguard. In my opinion, this is the way to convert White Swords players into, into Vanguard. I mean, you're not wrong with the deck play. We'll get to that later. Um, so yeah, this happened, and we were like, okay, this is happening. We did not expect the same week for them to reveal a full deck. I'm not saying a couple of cards, they actually revealed enough for a full deck. And this gives us a little bit of insight on how they're going to do this set. Because the set has five VRs, and there's technically five bands in Bang Dream. 
and basically each band is gonna have its own sub archetype and its own VR. What that means is basically like this. The first band we actually got to see is Pop and Party. The way it works is all the cards in this set are gonna be of the clan Bang Dream, but their race is gonna be their band. So they're not human, they're, they're races that can clear band. So in this case, Pop and Party. And we're gonna go from the big top all the way down through all of it. So, there's gonna be a lot, because it's basically a full deck. And we're gonna go fast and we're gonna talk about the idea. If you wanna read, better just pause the video wherever it comes. Pretty much. First, we got uh, Glittering Stage Kasumi Tomoe. She's a grade 3 VR for Pop and Party. Has the Force Marker, so she, it's a Force Man. We don't know if the other uh, decks are gonna be Excel, Protect, or all of them Force across the board. But it'll be interesting to see if, you know, they're mixed and match. Her ability is Continuous Vanguard. If you have a unit with Teya Hanazono, Remy Ushigome, Sae Yamabuki and Arisa Ichigaya in their card names each all or, uh, of your front row rear guards get the trigger effects that this unit gets by drive check. So it's an ultima for your front row. Hi Masonic Lord Blaster. Pretty much. A Masonic, Masonic Lord Blaster combined with ultima. Her own ability is act Vanguard if an order was not played this turn cause Cannon Blast Moon search your deck for up to or drop zone for up to one pop and party music and play it. And if you search your deck, show for your deck. The pop and party music are the orders. There's three orders that got leaked, and we'll get to them. And they're a little bit special, not not your normal orders in deck. Before we get there, we gotta move on with the other other cards. Like I said, it's a full deck. We got overflowing execution Kasumi Tomoya, the grade two of her. Uh, Auto Vanguard Rigor when placed. Look at seven cards on the top of your deck. Reveal to one music. From among them, put it into your hand and shop it. So she basically looks at top seven for the orders. Moving on. Sparkling Star, Kasumi Tomoe. Auto Vanguard, when placed, look at seven cards from the top of your deck. Reveal up to one grade three with Kasumi Tomoe and its card name from among them, put it into your hand and shop your deck. Her other ability is Auto Rigor, cost put this unit on the bottom of your deck and return a poppin' party without Kasumi Tomoe and its card name from your drops onto your hand. So it's a grade three searcher because you only have one grade three. And it also, it's a fixer, like in White Swords, it's basically a ditch and get, get back. But this, instead of going to drop zone, goes to deck, because in White Swords, you want to mill yourself out, because you have refreshes. In Banger, you don't want to mill yourself out. So it's interesting. Most of these cards actually remind you of White Swords. And then, last but not least, the Kasumi Tomoyas, Heart Thumping Star Kasumi Tomoya. It's a starter, and she has a starter ability of, you know, draw, and if you go second, get the quick shield. Whew. That's it for Kasumi Tome. Moving on. As you saw with, with the Grade 3. As you saw with the Grade 3, she needs basically a Magic Lord Blaster with four different other characters. These are the other four different characters and only one card for each character. Not like the other one where it's a Grade 1, Grade 2, Grade 3. These are all just one specific card and one specific grade. So we're going to go from the top with the highest rarity, uh, the Triple Rare, Friend Feeling, Arisa Ichigaya. She's a grade one, auto rigor to win placed, cost soul blast one, reveal a crit trigger from hand, look at five cards on the top of your deck, reveal up to one pop and party with without having a reset Ichigaya in its card name from among them, put it into your hand and shuffle your deck. So she searches for any pop and party from the top five as a hand, except for herself. It's a lot of reminiscent to other white sports decks and effects. Moving on. The grade two, always natural Teya Hanazano. Auto Rigor, when placed, cause discard a card from hand, return the music from your job zone to hand, the music order. This is very reminiscent to White Swords of fixing and getting climaxes back from the graveyard to hand. Her ability is Auto Rigor, and when your Vanguard attacks, this unit gets, this unit and that unit get 5k until the end of turn. So it powers up your Vanguard and itself. Not bad. <sighs> Editing's gonna be a bitch. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on, great to Miss Hardworker Remy Ushigome. Auto Rigor, when your Vanguard attacks, if your opponent's Vanguard is grade 3 or greater, cause discard a card from your hand, reveal a critical card from your hand, and a popping party on your Vanguard gets power 10k and drive plus 1 until the end of bat. Not too shabby, it's just reveal, ditch, and you get the card back because of the drive ticket and it powers up your Vanguard. Not too shabby. Last but not least of the Majesty Lord of Conditions, uh, Popipas, Pop -pop Popipas Coordinator Saya Yamabuki. Auto Rigor, when placed, cost Cannon Bless 1, put a card from your hand on the bottom of your deck and return a critical trigger 
and the pop and party, a pop a pimp party normal unit from your job zone to your hand, this ability may only be used by a card with the same card name once a turn. Not too shabby. You combine this with the other great one that kind of looks at top five, it's really easy to combo off. This thing puts something back, gets your crit trigger in normal unit. Pop, pop the other one, look at top five because you now have a crit trigger to you know, showcase for the cost. Oof. Not too shabby. They also revealed all the triggers. Oh, well, not all the triggers, the triggers for Pop and Party. And they're the crit, draw, and heal. The only reason there's only one crit and one drop because the crits and draws have effects. The crit says you can have up to nine, uh, 12 copies of this crit in the deck, and the draw says you can have up to 8 copies of this draw in the deck. Heals only 4 so. And last but not least, the orders I was mentioning in previous sets. There's a grade 3, grade 2, and grade 1 order, and a little bit special. The music orders, they have all one line of text that they share. After playing a music, put it in the back row of the middle column until the end of the turn. So they're the, one of the only orders we currently have that stay on the board. The reason they stay on the board because they have rare guard abilities. Let's go with the grade one order first because you're basically going to be using them almost always. Uh, auto rear guard when placed, draw a card, look at three cards from the top of your deck, reel to one crit trigger from among them, put it into your hand, and put the rest on the bottom of your deck in any order. Not too shabby, replaces itself and adds a card specifically, yeah, specifically a crit that helps your other abilities. The Grade 2 order. Continuous rear guard if your opponent's vanguard is grade 2 or greater, all of your front row units get power 5k. Its other ability is auto rear guard when placed, soul bless one, look at 5 cards from the top of your deck, put a card from among them into your hand and so forth. It puts anything. Doesn't need a popping party, doesn't need to be a trigger, it can be anything. You can put an order, you can put a unit you're missing for the uh, Majesty Lord effect, you can put anything you want. That's oh, a really and, and it's all for a soul, which is not shabby. Last but not least, the grade 3 order auto rigor at the beginning of your battle. Battle phase. Whew. If you have a unit with Kasumi Tomoya, Teya Hanazono, Remy Usugome, Sayama Buki, uh, Arisa Ichigaya, in their card names, each reveal five cards from the top of your deck. Put up to one crit trigger from among them on the top of your deck and put the rest on the bottom of your deck in any order. If your opponent's vanguard is grade three or greater, all of your units get five power, 5k until the end of turn for each critical trigger that was revealed. Oh. Yeah. So, ooh, I was mis misplaying. So it can get better. It can get bigger. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, for every crit trigger revealed. So not put on top, revealed. So let's say you use this, battle phase begins, you put look at top five, there's three crits there, you put one of them on top, the rest on the bottom. Plus 15. Plus 15 to every single unit on the board. Not only that, there's a crit trigger on top, and because the condition for the grade three order is the same as the majesty condition for the vanguard, when you dry check that trigger, all your front row units are gonna get 10k and a critical. Who needs force two? You don't. The Magical Christmas Land where you build five crit triggers from the top five. Oh yeah, just say to your opponent GG. <laughs> or have, do you have three PGs? <laughs> <laughs> Dump your hand or die. <laughs> Pretty much. Are you so, playing protect? You have a chance. <laughs> you have a chance. <laughs> Hope everybody was following along at home with that. There was a lot of cards because this is basically a full deck. Ignore that. <laughs> um, what does this mean? This one thing means that all the cards in the um, this set are going to work around their band. This one works around Papa Party, Roselia is going to work around Roselia, Afterglow is going to work after Afterglow, and so on and so on. It also means that all the order cards might be also music, so they're going to stay. These are new kind of order cards opening up. How does this deck play? Because we already played some playtesting and we're going to soon record with it, and the recording is going to come out tomorrow and Sunday. Um, it's basically like you're playing a White Swords deck. Yeah. It is almost identical to playing a White Swords deck. Most White Swords cards look at top 5 and add a card. Ditch a card to add a climax. You're basically tinkering and finding the pieces you need in White Swords. Toolbox. Pretty yeah. much. <laughs> and then before you start attacking, you play down the climax to get as many combos as possible. It's almost the same here. Most effects look at top 5, grab stuff here, grab stuff there, get your pieces. Play the order. The order is in the back row of the Vanguard. It basically is like a climax, especially because it's sideways. Yeah, basically, it's definitely like Majesty Little Blaster, 
and that it can't break if you don't see peace. But, but but unlike, unlike Majesty, that. unlike Majesty of Bastard, every single card that you need for the peace can search out the other card. Yeah, basically, it's stupid because it's it is. Out of what the six, five or six games you've played, you bricked once. And he, I didn't even that break that much. It wasn't that bad. You eventually got back home to it. I mean, yeah, like, but like you can ditch cards and get them back from drop. You can ditch so cards. Assembling cards. Voltron is not hard at all. Nope. All You're the really Exodia pieces will find their way to the field, and you will get there. I've seen it firsthand. It's Does this hard. mean the deck is OP? Eh. There's one problem. There's no drop PGs. So, also, orders do not have shields. So or nope. grade one PGs, period. Not even that. Not, not only that the orders not have shields, you can't even place an order in Guardian Circle. Yep. It's literally a deck card in your hand during your opponent's turn. Yep. So it costs like you have to guard with three or more at the same time for the end of the turn. You're, you got an order in hand, you're boned. Yeah. Um, so it's just all the offense in the world, not as much defense. It is defense still because. Well, like, I meant like. Sentinel wise, there is oh, yeah. zero sentinel. There's defense. zero sentinel, but you still gotta think. Most of the effects need a creature in hand, so you always have at least one creature in hand. And if your dry checks are bountiful, you're getting still creatures in. You're getting more than enough shield in hand, honestly. And with everything toolboxing and just plusing, your hand's not abysmal and your field's decent. Oh, absolutely. The Plus, field. the grade three can search on any of the orders, any of the grade three, any of the three orders. You need a, a unit to complete your combo. You get the grade two order. Hope it's on the top five. You need, uh, you have all the pieces, and you just need to push, get the grade three order, and just wreck, wreck face. Or you just need, just want to plus a little bit, get the grade one order, draw a card, get a crit trigger in hand. Like, it, there's no downside too much to this deck other than, and all the costs yeah. are like free to like bare minimum. Soul blast. There's two, I consider soul blast free. <laughs> there's two counter blaster. There's two cards that need counter blast, the grade three and the grade one. And there's two cards that need Soul Blast, the Order and the Grade 1. Everything else is a reveal or a ditch effect or just do it. It's super, this deck is super discounted on, on, <laughs> on activated stuff. Just imagine how the other four bands are going to do. I mean, if they're similar, I'm not surprised. Um, but you know what, if they don't end up with Sentinels, period, that's an interesting balance to oh, the, for how fast they assemble their pieces. Very, very. I could see it as a weird kind of... Balance. Last bit of no for the white shorts players if you don't believe me. But just think of it this way. You have the grade three and you have all the necessary pieces and you have the order that's rested in the back row. Just do me this. Vanguard is three front, three back. White shorts is three front, two back. Just move that order out of the way and move the back rows close so you're basically playing white shorts. <laughs> just move it off to the side. <laughs> <laughs> now you gotta wait for one to turn itself up. Well, you know, know Bushiro right? owns them both, so you know. Man, there was one in during one time PlayStation against him where I drive checked and almost was tempted to put the drive check into my damage on like stock. I'm like, wait, wait hold up, no, 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 this goes a hand. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, interesting fact. And if, one more thing I want to note: a lot of people mentioned that this is just a one-time thing. Well, we'll see. It's like Token Rambo. There's a chance that this is just gonna show up now and never again. On the other hand, Bushiro owns full rights to this, unlike Token Rambo. So there's a chance that this might become like a new Bermuda Triangle where we only see support for this once a year. Or maybe twice a year. Or once every two years, that's what I want to say. Yeah, it's a very just, you rarely see it and it's just going to be strong out the box just so it has staying power. Because you don't have to worry about it having a stride and premium. Pretty much. Don't you explain. Anywho, that was interesting and fun. It was something. It was something. So wait, it's a new clan, so... Yeah. So, I mean... Now we have technically 26 clans. Oh, 28. 7 if you want to call, or count Erdinger. Or Erdinger, or whatever that is. But, like, what I was thinking is, so they don't have a... Stri like, what nation are they? They're no nation. Like so they don't, have a, they don't have a master strike. Bank, bank, dreams. Dreams. bank dreams are clan. Yeah. Like Token like, Rumble, they, they, they are to no nation. It's good to know. So they have almost zero premium because there are Cray Elemental Strides. So I can't say absolutely zero. It's all about the Cray Elemental deck. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't work every single thing in here has an effect. It, like, it, it, it don't, it don't need it. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, anything else we want to talk about, guys? I think I you think, did all yeah, the I think talking you covered for us. Up. Yeah, I think you did everything. Uh, <laughs> I, I am so sad for me in editing because I, I, I got to figure out how to turn those cards sideways now. Oof, anywho. 
As always, a thing that wraps up episode 54. Not a bad episode, interesting week, especially with the White Swords in Vanguard now. Maybe they'll do something down the road where Vanguard's gonna go into White Swords. Just imagine, either, either some clan being a White Swords unit, or just doing the anime, and you have a blushing Aichi that you play as a level 3. No, it's just gonna... Oh my god! Gonna do the a level 3 Kai combo with a clan because it's called Final Turn. Get on it, Bushy. The meta, oh, the, no. like the, the, the meta, like of that. No, no I'm gonna see the unit, the actual Vanguard units. Like, there's gonna be a Kagero uh, deck. There's gonna be a Blaster deck. My God. No, no, and no. then they're gonna have the climaxes as the actual characters play in the deck. I mean, Blaster deck is a blue deck. Kagero is a red deck. You can do Neo Nectars yeah. or something as a green RTT's deck. Is and green. Royal Paladin is a uh, yellow deck. Yeah. Oof. There's abundance. Yeah. Actually, I can see Zero Zero Nectar. Nectar. Ooh. Gear Chronicle Red. Neo Nectar Green. Yeah. Royal Paladin uh, Yellow, and then Ro uh, no, no, Gold Paladin. Royal Paladin. Oh, shoot. Uh, never mind. I'm trying to think. Try three with Aichi somehow. Jet Red, uh, Alt Mile Blue, Neo Nectar Green. Shadows. Something yellow. Shadow. Shadow. No, Royal Paladin Yellow. Oh, gold. Jet Blue, Neo Nectar Green, and Kagero Red. There you go. That works. This gears. Yeah, yeah. He got blue, just ignore the red scarf. Proof. Okay, enough yeah. dilly dallying. Yeah. That's it for episode uh, 54. If you liked the video, please leave a like, share it with your friends, comment down below. And if you want to see more, subscribe to, uh, to the channel and ring that bell to get notified. Maybe even follow us on Facebook and join our Discord. But other than that, I've been Philip. This is Alex. And I'm Long. And we'll see you in the next one. Right. Woo! God fucking damn it. <laughs> I I knew I was gonna I'm tired for you. I know <laughs> it's a full day.